G'day everyone, my name is David Meyer and welcome back to First Time Reefer TV. And you can tell by the fact that my face looks like a Smurf that we are at another tank here in Sydney. We are possibly at one of the best SPS tanks that uh, I have seen to date. Um, and like this thing is absolutely freaking spectacular. So uh, I'm going to turn the camera around now. We're going to speak to the man that owns this tank. He's going to tell us all about it. And uh, let's, let's learn a couple of things here. Alrighty, so we got the tank here. This is my man, David Sirius, and his surname is uh, showing you what he takes his SPS as. Just really, really serious. So, dude, can you tell us a little bit about your tank, please, man? Because it is exceptional. Now, before we start, I'm going to get you to stand on that corner there and show your beautiful face to the camera next to your beautiful tank, man. Go for it. Yeah, so I actually started with a water box 80.4 in 2018, and then a year later I decided... 80.4, is that half that? No. Yeah, so it's very high, yep. but it's still four, 4 foot. Okay. So it doesn't really work well with uh, SPS, it doesn't have the height. Initially I bought it because I love Zoas and I love looking at top down, but uh, I think my love for SPS has just grown over the years. Man, I can see why. Yeah, so special thanks to uh, Bill Morgan for introducing me to the world of SPS and teaching me pretty much everything I know about it. Yep. Um, so it's it's Bill's fault that you have no money. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> so I'll, I'll blame him. Yeah. Yeah. Bill is just chilling in the back corner there. <laughs> so so you started at the eighty point four. You've gone to this. And obviously, this tank doesn't look like well, you got this like back in 2019. 2019. Yep. And obviously, it just hasn't grown <laughs> to this much in that short period of time. You transferred it over a tank. So, yep. um, you know, what, did, what have you learned most so far about your, your reefing journey or your SPS journey? Um, SPS journey, um, it's actually quite interesting. I don't think I've met any SPS keepers that haven't lost a colony or haven't lost a piece. For sure. So I think if you're going to step into SPS, um, that's just a fact. And yeah. um, placement is actually really important. And um, knowing how to create the rock structure that supports the SPS structure. So I actually had a lot of help from Bill, well, which I'm really grateful for. Yeah. Um, but as time goes on, you kind of look at it um, and you kind of try to figure out what colors go where and um, what corals like each other. So you understand that, yeah, there's some tabling, so you kind of put it on the edge and let it plate out, you know. Yeah. Um, some grow taller, you know, strawberry shortcake loves a lot of light, so I would just um, recommend putting it in high places or where it's gonna get that par. Um, I have saved a couple of white pieces that I bought from the store that look pretty average, and you know, sometimes you take a chance and it actually colors up quite beautifully. Yeah, nice. Um, so I got this, piece from Beespoke and it was just white so we thought it was gonna just die but it's actually like grown out um, I'm very happy with it that. It's very so, healthy. So I think that's one of the things I really enjoy as well just finding those pieces that um, yeah the uncut diamonds and uh, putting it into your tank and seeing what comes out. Yeah so can you run us through uh, your tank system what lights you're running what flow you've got what do you run under the skirt yeah, so at the moment I'm running two XR30s, Gen 4s, um, two Kessel A360s, and three MP40s. Um, underneath the sump, uh, running a um, RE DC200 skimmer, so I really like the big skimmers. Yeah. Uh, that's a day worth of skimmate. A day? Yeah, so I cleaned it out yesterday, and it just pulls out a lot of junk. Crazy. Um, excuse the frag racks. I do have a H380 um, refugium light. Um, I do want run one reactor just with carbon. Yeah. Um, but you said, I, you, you said uh, like you change out your carbon very, very regularly. Yeah, I actually change it every week. Um, sometimes even more. Yeah. Uh, because just from places where I've read the online, you know, it gets exhausted within like three days and. After about four or five days, I don't really see the benefit of it. Okay. Uh, I, everyone knows that the day after you run carbon, it's just like crystal clear. Yeah. And, and that so helps changing the power. regularly is the base. And uh, well, while we're down here, let's run through your dosing as well. 
Uh, yeah, so dosing Calc Calc Mag and uh, Reef Booster. So this system is um, a RA system. So I, you know, buy my own calcium chloride, mix the RA products in it. Very happy with the colors. I've tried other systems before and uh, they just didn't work for me. So okay. I find that RA um, is, is a thing that works for me. Okay. And you've got obviously a battery back up there as well, just in case anything happens, right? Yeah, just um, remember to keep it charged. Because last, <laughs> last time my tank uh, died and it's like, hey, I call home, you know, is any flow in the tank? What flow? Nothing's on. What? <laughs> I have a battery backup. <laughs> oh, man, like, okay. so. Oh, also, I used to run everything off an of Arlec board, but I found out with um, outages. And there's a power out back, that don't switch back on, right? Which, it, which is why I didn't charge my... Um, oh, dear. Battery. Okay. So keep your batteries charged. Yeah. Test it regularly. Yeah. One key. Okay. So that's light, that's flow. Uh, water chemistry, what salt are you using? Um, at the moment, um, I'm kind of playing with salts. So I found great results with red, red tea blue. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to continue to use in the future. Okay. Um, and feeding? I feed a lot. Feed a so, lot. every single time I walk past the tank, I drop some food. Oh, right. So, it could be a little bit more in the mornings. More, so, one big feed in the evening, one yep. big feed in the morning, and just sprinkles throughout the day. Yeah, that'll keep um, the chromes happy. Yeah, so I believe in heavy in, heavy out. Yep. I'm still working on the heavy out because <laughs> the nitrates are around 10, 5 to 10, and my phosphate's always 0 0.1 or higher. Okay. So, um, Dude, I just came from a tank that had 50 nitrate and everything <laughs> was still looking good, so... Exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. So, what, do you, what do you do to export nutrient though? Is it just the skimmer? Just the skimmer and refugium. Oh, you got a refugium as well? Yeah, so running a H380 Kessel, um, yep. Verilite, but I am switching to an algae turf scrubber. Okay. So I'm gonna You're the second person I've heard that from tonight. <laughs> Yeah. There's, there's this trend. Yeah, okay. Um, and coral food? Uh, coral food, I use a mix of things. I use BioEnhance. Yep. Um, mix. Oh. So I use. BioEnhance? BioEnhance. What's, what's BioEnhance? Oh. Alright, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get um, my ass through the second time I've shit on him. <laughs> So, Fort Marie Mins, uh, Reef Revolution Pulp Feast. Uh, oh, yeah. Reef Roids. Nice. As well as Vitalis. SPS Vitalis food. is great. So, there's a daily feed. I feed daily. Feed daily. And, but I would mix it up. So, some days I'll, or well, one day I'll use Reef Roids, one day Reef Revolution, one day SPS Foods. Yeah, crazy. So and just a broadcast feed over the tank with the return pump off? Or? I actually um, switch all my pumps off. Yep. And I target feed. Oh, right. Yeah, so I target That's like feed. three hours of your day. Oh, uh, it doesn't take that long, actually. Maybe 60 seconds. Oh, really? Yeah, like okay. just turkey baser, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. and, uh, Great sound effects, right? Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then now, there uh, we go. Okay, what else can we talk about? Um, water change once a week. Okay. I do 100 liters every week. Yep. And Same day, every week? Uh, or just whenever you can? Give or take, but every week. Okay. I'll make sure I get it done. Yeah. Yep. Um, and you were telling us a little bit before about Coral Warfare that oh, you've yes. been able to sort of recognize. Where should we yes. look at? That we can see. So these two colonies have built up a wall. So they actually coexist quite fine. and. I guess the goal of the SPS system is actually to be able to join multiple different corals without that warfare. So it's as soon eventually as eventually going to grow, isn't it? Exactly. So this table, which touch this one, which will touch this one, which will touch this one. So eventually they're all going to touch, and um, there's going to be warfare. But it's about recognizing early signs of um, what that warfare looks like, which you know just looks like tissue damage, and removing that coral because something's going to win. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like you can just see um, this table here 
it's time to overtake this little piece of frag over here. So this will not make it. This will probably die because unless you edge. remove it, right? Exactly. So SPS man, is like, kind of tricky. Literally encrusted everything on the rock, man. Like this is crazy, dude. And this was uh, my Rainbow Monty experiment with um, a nice couple of pieces in the middle. That seems to be doing all right. And you got to like, so the whole base of your tank is covered in frag plugs. Yeah, so I had a vision. Um, it was to have Monty's and Zoas on the floor. So I'm still growing it out. Some of these are just, um, you know, my master col like you know, my mother colonies that I'll just I'll use for fragging. Just frag off, yeah. Yeah. So eventually, but eventually, I want this carpet to kind of be all over the floor. And yeah. um, these ones used to be crust all over. Yeah. And is it to, so you can easily move things around as well? Or, um, or is it just easier to attach a bunch of things to a plate? It's, and just it's easier to thing? frag things off the <coughs> plates. Yeah. So I can just lift the plate up, cut it, and then it's easily fragged. Um, cool. But yeah, also, depending on certain uh, species, some like more light, some like less, so I can have the option of moving it if it's really unhappy. Yeah. So, I mean, you've obviously been incredibly successful running a reef tank and your tank does, uh, and, and your tank proves that in how it looks, right? So, if you had to give a young grasshopper, David Sirius, three bits of advice before he buys a tank again, what would your advice be? Okay, so my advice is, um, take your algae cleaners, your scrub or whatever, outside your tank because I've scratched it a bunch. Uh -huh. By just leaving it in there. Um, just awesome. things grow on it. Exactly, and when you have frag plugs in there, when the frag, frag rack drops, don't lift it up with the magnet, because that would most likely scratch a tank. Oh, that's totally what I do. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably my tip for new reapers, but um, I guess the, on how to actually run a system, yeah. I think finding someone that is successful and trying and learning as much as you can and following their method. Yeah. And then with that knowledge, you can kind of start experimenting a little bit with yourself, but follow a recipe. Yeah. So follow a recipe, take your main clean, you got one more. One more. Um, and buy frags. Buy frags. <laughs> well, frags do actually make it like that little bit easier, right? Because yeah. they're tank hardened. Exactly. And, and, you know, easily grown in the, not, not easily, but like used to being grown in the environment that yep. we have. Whereas wild colonies, um, you're more likely to see the colors dull. Um, yeah. And then you don't really know what color you're going to end up with too, yeah. right? And I'd say they die a bit easier. Uh -huh. If your tank is like going through a crash of some sort, they'll be the first ones to kind of go. Yeah. So favorite piece of coral in your tank? Um, I really like this rainbow chalice. That is exceptional. Man. It's a tiny piece, but how long you had that? Um, I'd say about six to eight months. So, so we've got your favorite piece of coral. You've told us about your system, what you're running. Now, uh, what is your biggest reefing mistake or a funny reefing story? Uh, biggest reefing mistake is apart from hanging out with Andy. <laughs> 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 I guess when your tank goes through crashes for random reasons, um, I think one thing that I didn't do previously was keep on top of ALK. Yeah. So I had dinos. I try to get rid of dinos. Um, you know, ALK spike. End up losing more, try and treat it. Yeah. So pretty much just whenever you are going through a major tank problem, uh, always check your parameters. And yeah. Check it daily because because um, things can go wrong so quickly. Exactly. So amazing, man. One thing I do really recommend is share your corals. Um, I, I'd say that's the one most important thing because. I've had colonies die, but luckily I've given a fact to a friend or a couple friends and I was able to get that piece back. Okay. So I'm really big on fragging. Um, Clearly. So you can follow me on Instagram at Simple Reaper or my Facebook page, Serious Frags, yep. and I'll be at Fragstop. So tell us a little bit about Fragstop. When is it, where is it, and what are they going to be able to buy from you actually? So we'll be at Fragstock on the 4th of April at ARC3.
ARC3, that's Arc Aquariums. Where are they located? They're located in Hornsby. So Hornsby. It's, okay. a Sydney, it's a Sydney event, so yeah. you guys got to come down. Beautiful. Um, what you'll see from me at Fragsock is uh, a staple of Zolas, um, some Montes, and maybe a couple of SPS pieces. Yep. So you can see um, I've started fragging here. Um, there's some GSBs, some little colonies that I've grown out that I'm going to bring along. There's a stack of Dallas on this side. Which is the best Dallas I've seen, by the way. It is green. It is like proper green. So this is the first on my channel. You've actually got a question for my viewers. I do. So I'm about to change the lights. Um, and I'm thinking about running three radiants. Maybe a G5. Woo! But do I have two on this side? And one on this side, and in what orientation should I run it? Oof. So your, your question is, two on one side, yep. and one on the other side, yep. why not spread evenly? Because you can't spread evenly because there's a weir in the middle. Yes. Uh, Very good question. Yes. My answer would be, if you were asking me, yep. get four. <laughs> 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 that, in that'd be, time, in yeah, time. yeah, four or light bracket. That's yeah. what you'd have to do, right? So, if guys, if you've got suggestions on this lighting, uh, lighting setup, uh, leave a comment down below and tell them to buy another radio. <laughs> Amazing, David. Thank you so much for sharing the tank. This is, like I said, probably one of the most incredible SPS dominant tanks I've ever seen. Uh, He's put a few photos up. Where did you put photos? Everywhere. Yeah. It was mainly on the water box page. Or some water incredible water like horror shots that he's got. Well, in right, green green. Yeah. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe to this channel. And my friends, until next time. You know how to do this? Because you watch my videos unlike Uma, right? <laughs> One, two, three. Peace! <laughs>